The Nintendo Wii is one of the best-selling consoles of all time. Thanks to its quirky yet inclusive nature of motion controls and easy access for all ages, the Wii brought fun, accessible games for everyone. Unfortunately, due to the nature of motion controls, add-on controllers like the Nunchuck, Wiimote Plus Dongle, Classic Controller, and Plastic Snap-Ins, it can be tricky to emulate the Wii properly on a standard controller system like the Steam Deck. It can be hard to translate the motions of bowling or driving without those specialized controllers. On today's video, we're going to take my favorite Wii game of all time, Excite Truck, a game that is a sideways Wii controller game that requires several degrees of motion control, and make it not only usable on the Steam Deck, but actually make it more playable than it was before. As a bonus, Excite Truck was one of the rare Wii games that allowed you to put your own MP3 files on the Wii's SD card and have them play in-game while you race. We're going to show you how to inject your MP3s into the SD card so that they show up there. This tutorial was performed with a mouse and keyboard attached. You will probably, at the very least, need a keyboard due to the nature of how gaming mode renders some of the dialog boxes in Dolphin. Ready to get started? Let's go! Let's start by analyzing the control scheme used by Excite Truck and get a feeling of how we're going to map these to the deck. Time to break out pen and paper and noodle this out. Now this is a racing game that only uses the Wii Mote controller, no nunchuck, no motion plus, or any sort of adapter. On the Wii controller we have buttons A, B, 1, 2, plus, minus, and a home button along with a D-pad, and of course a full range of motion. As a bonus, this game uses the Wii Mote held sideways to play. This game uses motion control in two ways, tilting left and right to steer and tilting forward and backward to control the truck in the air for tricks and landings. It uses the two button as an accelerator, the one button as a brake, and the D-pad is used for menu selection as well as turbo boost while playing. Now, this could be a lot worse. Let's map this out on the Steam Deck. We'll assign tilt left and right to the left analog stick left and right. Tilt up and down will be left analog stick up and down. Now you may ask yourself why I'm not using the gyro to simulate the motion. On the Wii, you held the controller on your lap and you were looking at the TV while you were wildly steering and playing. Having the screen on the motion controller itself doesn't sound like fun to me. In fact, one of Excite Truck's weaknesses, in my opinion, was the difficulty in steering. Mapping these controls to a stick will make this game far more fun to play. On the Wii controller, 1 and 2 are left to right, so we probably want to assign 2 to the B button on the deck, 1 to be the A button. We'll assign the D-pad on the Wii controller to the deck's D-pad. No reason to change that. The last consideration is tricky, the turbo boost. On the Wii controller, you can press any direction on the D-pad during play to boost, but you need to tap and hold, meaning it needs to be easy to get to while both hands are busy. The left is steering and the right is holding down the accelerator. Right, we'll map the turbo boost to one of the rear paddles. I'll go with the top left paddle. That will be tricky, but there's a way to do it. Now that we have the groundwork done, let's make it happen. For the purposes of this video, we will assume that you have MUDEC installed and running on your deck. We won't assume you have anything we set up yet. We'll take care of that next. I'll put a link to a couple of good MUDEC setups in the description below. We are going to be using PrimeHack's version of Dolphin, not the default version included with EmuDeck. If you did not elect to install it during EmuDeck setup, you can install it from the Discover Store app from desktop mode. We'll also be using Emulation Station to actually launch the game, not Steam ROM Manager. That's outside the scope of this video. If you do not have EmuDeck yet, please pause the video and come back once you're set up. Be sure to install Prime Hacks as one of the emulators when you do so. Now, of course, you'll need a copy of Excite Truck. I'm using a copy I ripped from my own game disc image on my Wii many years ago. It is in the WLBS disc image format. Others like ISO and NISO will probably work too, but this is what I have to work with. Let's copy that disk image over to Emulation ROM's Wii folder. I'm using SSH here, a link to a 
tutorial on how to set up SSH will be in the description below, from my PC using the amazing file manager directory Opus. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm a huge directory Opus fan and the power that it gives you over file management. Obviously, it's not required, but definitely useful. Next up, let's make a non-Steam game shortcut to the Dolphin Prime Hacks emulator so we can run it from game mode. Put yourself in desktop mode if you're not already there. Hit the Steam button and under Games, look for the Dolphin emulator. We want the little Prime Hacks ball, not the Blue Dolphin version. Right-click that entry and click Add to Steam. In a few moments, it will be added to your Steam library. Open Steam up and find Dolphin Emulator and hit play. Select Config and Paths. Hit Add, browse to your Wii ROMs folder. Excite Truck should be there now if it wasn't before. Let's open up controllers. Under Wii Motes, under Wii Remotes, select Emulate the Wii's Bluetooth adapter and Wii Remote 1, make sure it says Emulated Wii Remote. Click the Configure button next to that. Under the Device dropdown, we need to select the device associated with the DeX controller. Choose SDL Microsoft Xbox 360 Pad 0. Now in Profile, enter Excite Truck and hit Save. Now close that window. Close the controllers window, then close the Dolphin emulator. Let's go ahead and close Steam and return to gaming mode. Select the Dolphin emulator. Click the controller icon. Select enable back grip buttons and let's assign L4 to D-pad down. That will allow the top left back paddle to be the turbo hitting D-pad down during play. Hit back and hit play. We're ready to set the controller mapping up now. Select controllers and under Wii Remote 1, select configure. Choose Excite Truck from the profile dropdown and hit load. Check the sideways Wii Remote checkbox. Excite Truck requires this. If we didn't do this, the D-pad wouldn't behave correctly when using the menus in the game. Select the extension dropdown and select none. We do not need the nunchuck. Uncheck the attach motion plus. We don't need that either. Let's start with the D-pad, that is an obvious one. For each direction, let's click it and remap. As you can see, Dolphin calls the D-pad hat zero. Next, the buttons. We need one, two, along with plus and minus. Let's make those A, B, view, and menu. We don't need A or B, but let's assign them while we're here to the X and Y buttons on the deck. All right, time to change that motion control to the left analog stick. Select the motion simulation tab. Under tilt, we are going to assign forward to the left analog up, backward to the left analog down, left to left analog left, and right to left analog right. Now, that wasn't so bad, was it? Let's hit save under profile to commit these to Excite Truck's profile. Close the window and then close the controller's window. Right-click Excite Truck and select Properties. Under the Game Config tab, select the Editor tab. We're going to add that controller profile we just made to this game's config. Now this is where having a keyboard attached is going to be rather helpful. We're going to add a controls override to ensure Excite Truck always uses that config. This text is in the description of this video for easy cut and paste. Go ahead and close that window. We're now ready to try the game for the first time. Since I've already done this before making this video, I'm not gonna be asked for a save file and I've already got a profile ready. Let's test our controls with the tutorials. We'll do basics two, turbo jump, since that pretty much tests out all of our controls. We want to make sure all is well with acceleration, braking, and turbo boosting. Let's check it out. All right, everything checks out. We have a working game here. 
Now, before we move on to getting the MP3 songs working, let's run a quick race to see how well it performs in the field. This will also give us a chance to see how performance is. This first race in Mexico is a good benchmark. As you can see, whenever there are particle effects like dust, the game slows drastically down. But during play, it seems overall okay. But since this game is about high frame rates and an intense sense of speed, we need to dial the sexy back a little to obtain the best looking game, but with the best performance. I am no Wii emulation guru, folks. I'm just making my way. But I do know that internal resolution rendering is expensive, so let's click on graphics and select the enhancement tabs. Internal resolution is set for 2x or 1280 by 1056, which sort of fits the Steam Deck's resolution. The next step down is native, so no uptick in internal resolution rendering, which is 640 by 528. This would be the Wii's maximum display resolution and should look okay on a small screen like this. Let's try that Mexico race again. Hey, the stuttering seems to be gone, or at least a lot better. The graphics took a nasty hit though, didn't they? Now this would be acceptable to me, after all, this is what the original game looked like and I'm used to it. But there are a few things we could try and see if we can get the game looking just a bit better. One of the issues I have here revolves around aliasing that nasty look around the edges of low definition graphics, like the antenna on my truck. In some cases, anti-aliasing can really help and depending on the GPU, can be relatively cheap from a resource standpoint. Back to graphics, then enhancements, and let's flip anti-aliasing to 2x MSAA. Now that we have that turned on, let's have another look at that Mexico race. Hey now, that looks pretty damn good, at least on the seven inch screen. I'm sure a bigger screen scrutiny would be in order, um, but at this point, I'm pretty satisfied with this setup. Now, since we've messed with the default configuration of Dolphin and some would say have degraded it, let's just add the internal resolution and anti-alias changes to excite trucks specifically using the user INI like we did for the controller profile. Right click Excite Truck, then select Properties, then Game Config, then the Editor tab. We're going to add a block for video settings and add internal resolution set to 1 and MSAA or anti aliasing to 2. We'll go back to our graphics config and put the values for those two back to the normal values for other games we might be playing on this emulator. Great. Now we're ready to try Excite Truck again with our override values. All right, this is looking better than Wii and is totally acceptable. 
You can see my frame rate dip into the mid 40s from time to time, but it doesn't seem to take any toll on the enjoyment of this title, that sense of speed. All right, at this point, we could call it a day, but I did discuss the concept of injecting MP3s into the SD card so we could have custom music while we raced. This is a little trickier and we'll have to use a PC to do it. Let's get the location of the SD card image from Dolphin. Under Config, Paths, you see an SD card path location. Of course, this isn't a simple folder you can just drop your songs in. That would be all too easy. All too easy. Get that path, I'll provide it in the description below, but make sure they are the same, and we'll return to Windows and use SSH to fetch a copy of it for our use. Assemble the MP3 music files you would like to use. The SD card seems to have a limit of 128 megabytes, which should fit a dozen or more songs. Normally, I would use some of my favorite songs. Guns N' Roses' Sweet Child of Mine was always the first song on my playlist for Excite Truck, so there's a nostalgia hit there. But this is YouTube, and putting any good music in your video gets you spanked, so let's use a bunch of royalty-free small loops instead. Now that you have the music you want and ensure that it is under 128 megabytes in total, let's get it to the card image. We're going to download a disk mounter called IM Disk Virtual Disk Driver. This is free and on GitHub, so you can scrutinize it to your heart's content. It works on Windows 11 here, so I assume it will work on Windows 10 as well. Once we've downloaded and extracted the IM Disk Virtual Disk Driver, we'll use the install bat to install the driver. Verify the settings, match mine here, and install it. If you are asked to reboot, go ahead and do so before continuing this tutorial. At this point, we can right-click the SD RAW and select Mount as IM Disk Virtual Disk and create a drive letter to mount it. I will use Drive O. If all is well, your O drive will appear and I won't have anything in it already. Copy your songs to the root of the mounted drive. Now we need to dismount the drive. Right click the O drive and select Unmount IM Disk Virtual Drive and the O drive should disappear. Your file manager may be holding the drive open, so if you get a pop-up warning you of this, go ahead and force the dismount. Now we can copy the SD RAW file back to the emulator folder we got it from. Now don't worry about making a backup of your old one. Merely deleting the file will cause the emulator to generate a new blank one later should you need it. We copy over the new SD RAW file, and once that is complete, we're ready to jump back on deck and check out the music options. Once Excite Truck is loaded, go to Options, and there should be a Race Music option. We'll choose All Random. Now let's start a race. Hey, notice we have a sound option. You can actually see it recognizes the SD card as a music source. Yes. Hey, wait a minute. In fact, that isn't Excite Truck music playing right now. It's our own custom music. How cool is that? Now we're ready to race in style. We made it another long tutorial under your belt. If you made it this far, good job. You get a gold star. Now, if you learned anything here or found the content enjoyable, please hit subscribe to the channel, leave a comment or question, and like this video so others can find it. As always, the notification bell is your ticket to getting access to videos like this the moment they are released. I'm Shane R. Monroe, and I appreciate your viewership. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.